I am ready to go. This is Python's Paradise. This is your host, Greg Gilbert, a.k.a. the Python Hyena, straight out of Fredericton, New Brunswick, Canada. And folks, here we are on June the 16th, 2023, and we are celebrating the 30-year anniversary of Indecent Proposal. I don't have an Indecent Proposal t-shirt, but speaking of Adrian Lyme, I do have a Flashdance uh, t-shirt, so... <laughs> oh, nice. Nice. And I brought some lovely, I don't know if you can see this. I this can see back. that. Yeah. And decent proposal. Yeah. On the back, it says a husband, a wife, a billionaire, a proposal. There you go. And it's got money in it. It's uh, this was a little giveaway that was uh, handed out at the um, after party. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, one of my favorite Adrian Lyme uh, movies is Nine and a Half Weeks. I always love that, and I love the locations in it. And the music soundtrack, I come to discover, I've got it now, had a lot of Canadian talent on it. So oh. that was nice, too. Yeah, like Corey Hart, Luba, and uh, there's a two come immediately to mind, but they had others as well. I was like, wow. But uh but before we get to Indecent Proposal, I would like to dive into your background and uh, and what led you to get into the business. Okay. Well, hi to everyone. I'm Pamela Holt. I was in Indecent Proposal by the skin of my teeth. <laughs> um, I was uh, born in California and raised on the beautiful island of Hawaii. And cheers to you. <laughs> yep. Um, Born on the beautiful, or raised on the beautiful island of Hawaii, and I went to UCLA Theater Film School, and I was one of the few of my classmates who either hadn't already been in film, television, or on Broadway, or didn't have a parent that was connected to the industry, so I, a lot of times, felt like a little bit of a lone duck, <laughs> um, but luckily, with huge luck, um, I had graduated um, my second second quarter, and then I had to wait a quarter before I could walk for graduation. So I was just living at my apartment near UCLA and hanging out. And the first audition I ever went to, I got it. And that is, and it's an easy proposal. That is a whole, that is a whole story of unto itself. And um, then um, I also landed a duet singing with Barry Manilow, which was possibly the highlight of my life <laughs> you, you, you upstaged him didn't you well I don't know about that I think it's more that he gave me the platform he's such an accomplished generous person if I can divert a second first of all I love Mark and Brian oh hi <laughs> my buddy Skittles hi Skittles Skittles uh, was making indecent proposals for treats I love it <laughs> he said he, uh, he'll use the litter box if I give him treats. I'm like, Kitty, that's an indecent proposal. <laughs> so he's, hi he's hijacking. Uh, <laughs> so, um, yeah, I uh, Mark and Brian were real. They were radio DJs who who brought me on, and they're amazing. I'm still friends with both of them, but good friends with Brian. So. It, it was a really lucky draw. <laughs> and um, yeah, that's that's how I got started. That was the springboard for me. Well, one thing I noticed uh, looking at your reel and stuff, you know, especially with your your uh, new project you got coming out, mm -hmm. you have a real knack for humor. Even in Indecent Proposal, I see it. Uh, talk about that. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for that. <laughs> no one's ever complimented me on my humor. So yeah. I take it with great um with great pride. Thank you. Um I have always loved humor and I think I've, you know, I've used humor throughout my life to divert any bad situations. Mm -hmm. Um also I just like to laugh. So that's that's you know part of it. And I did go to uh First of all, I'm very grateful to uh, someone's looking at my reels. <laughs> um, I did go to Second City 
And I spent over 10 years on stage, really honing the craft of comedy mm -hmm. um, through whether I was acting or acting through song. So it was something that I've always really enjoyed. I think so often people thought, oh, she'll play the, the ingenue. I wanted to play the, the witch. I wanted to play the comedy. I wanted to play the mean girl. And I think you might have seen some of my singing reels. Oh, my gosh. Oh, I, I, think even... you should, I think you should put out an album. Yeah. Well, thank you. Your your lips to God's ears. Um, yeah, I did actually have two different songs out. The duet with Barry Manilow. And a couple of years ago, I had a Christmas song, another Christmas song out. But thank you. Yeah, yeah. I, was, I made my name as a professional singer for about 12 years. Mm -hmm. And then a few years back, I was the original cast of Cruel Intentions musical. So that was fun. Kind of kept in yeah. there. You know what? After the uh, Ice Bucket Challenge took off, you know, for ALS, there was another one that came out for uh, after Robin Williams sadly left us for suicide and depression awareness. And uh, I'd throw it out to you if you if I thought you you would do it, but since you're humorous, uh, it was called the Doubtfire Face Challenge and it involved you taking a pie in the face and you nominate three people. And I've been throwing it out to a few of my guests to try to get the industry involved. Oh, that is fun. I actually, I think for my 10th birthday, had a pie fight. Yeah. Yes. Oh my gosh. The Great Race, which was totally. Oh, I love it. You the love best. it. Every Thanksgiving, my family watches that movie. And um, so my parents said, what do you want for your birthday? And I was like, I want a pie fight. So they bought all these pies. And then a ton of them were just the whipped cream pies. Mm -hmm. And we were out on the lawn and just had a massive pie fight. And then all jumped in the water. <laughs> yeah. It now, how many, time, how many times did you get hit? Probably three or four. But for sure, like my sister just walked up and put one in my face. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? I love the great race, you know? I mean, first off, um, uh, Jack Lemon playing two different characters. But I'm going to tell you, um, watching oh Natalie Wood in that pie fight coming in there all elegantly. And when that first pie gets flung and Tony Curtis just kind of jogs out of the way and <laughs> gets her in the face and she's like, oh. Yeah, that is, her. and yeah, because at first she just like ducks, oh no, wait, Tony Curtis just sort of like ducks very, very cavalier out of the way, and then she gets nailed, and she goes, ah, and then she goes up and she gets into it. Jack Lemon is so priceless in that movie. I more love the laugh. Pies, oh wait, yeah, that was Jack Lemon as the little dictator. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like yeah. <laughs> I actually had um, Jennifer Edwards, uh, Blake Edwards' daughter, on here in tribute to him, and uh, we talked about uh, all of his films, including The Great Race, which I think is a really underrated comedy. You know, I I I, I wish there would be more pie scenes in movies. That's my favorite uh, physical joke, and I'm waiting. I'm waiting because right now, one of my favorite my favorite actress working right now would be perfect. I'd love to see Emma Stone do a pie scene. Well, maybe she and I will do one together. <laughs> yeah. I would love to see Emma Stone take a pie in the face, but I'd love to see her do it in a comedy. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, she, she has such a knack for comedy and she really, she has such a great, um, she has a great face and she, she has a great uh, ability to use her physical comedy. So I could just see her her eyes and her face after she's hit and she like wipes it off. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, I I watch everything she's in and she's got such di for, uh such diverse roles, you know. And I've been following her ever since Super Bad and I've always I've had a crush on her ever since, you know, but mm -hmm. but she's somebody that, you know, it's one thing, you know, you will have a crush on somebody, you just have to look at pictures on them on the internet. Emma Stone, I could watch her do an interview and just be inter entertained by her, you know, just, <laughs> but I think it's funny. You guys have pie fight for your birthday. That's awesome. You know, it was great. Yep. It was great. Yep. 
But yeah, that that uh, doubt for our face challenge came up for suicide and depression uh, awareness, and uh, I thought, ah, she's into humor. But um, but nonetheless, in decent proposal, you did some humor in that, you know, and sitting by uh, Woody. First, of all, I I want to know what it was like working for Ad. It was Adrian Lynn or Adrian Lime. I, I've heard it's pronounced both ways. Yeah, um, I've always said Adrian Lime. Um, okay. And in fact, believe it or not, I ran into him at a restaurant in, it's been about a year, year and a half, maybe just a year and a half. I'm sitting in a restaurant and I look over and I see him and I about fall out of my chair. I'm like, hi, Mr. Lyon, you gave me my first job. You got me my SAG card. I mean, the story is almost unbelievable, but even how he hired me, if, if my recollection remembers right, and, and I'll get to that, the way he hired me was even priceless. He's such a nice guy. He's so, he's so sweet. He's so kind. And he was so understanding, you know, how nervous I was. And um, I've read a lot of things online about him, about being on set. And I, I was only there two days, but I was there a long two days. And I didn't see any of the stuff that that people mention, um, you know, online. I just saw a really great, solid, uh, an actor director, and I was with two solid, solid actors. And then well, <laughs> I think the part of the thing is, is he's got a lot of heavy sex themes in a lot of his movies, and I think that's where he draws a lot of criticism. But I mean, you know, to each their own. A lot of people have different niches they go down. You know, but first of all, it's art. I mean, mm -hmm. we have new art all over the place, whether it's in magazines, sculptures, uh, paintings, film, television. Mm -hmm. um, and I always say, if you don't like something, don't watch it. I agree. I agree. But it's I remember when Indecent Proposal came out, th there's a thing on the radio that asked the question, if somebody approached you would you allow your wife to do it? You know, <laughs> that question, boy, did that jar a lot of people, you know, and, uh, or, you know, would you allow and, your husband to do it or would you, would you allow yourself to do it? Well, here's the thing. I had, um, Raymond Fletcher on here recently, who was the author of the cuckold Bible. And, um, I don't partake in that, but I find the whole idea because I heard H Howard Stern had interviewed either somebody, either a stripper or somebody in the porn industry. And the question came up, what does your significant other think? And I was a little shocked to hear that a lot of guys actually are turned on by it. And really, when you look at Indecent Proposal, Woody Harrelson as the husband is you know, his first – when uh, he gets approached by Robert Redford on this proposal, his response was, you're kidding, right? But it's not like an automatic – no, because that money talks. But poor – it's Demi Moore that's got to go through and do everything, you know? And the – yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I can't say that it might never have been the other way around mm -hmm. in real life. I mean, obviously, this movie was uh, based off a book. And it was a, a guy girl situation as well, but it could be flipped where it could be a woman. And trust me, I know so many guys in this town who have either gotten a job or lost a job to a female. And it, it, it just doesn't go both ways. We don't talk about it as much, but I could name five guys off the top of my head who either lost a job or got a job because a female put the same pressure on them which is really interesting. Um, yeah. But yeah, I just think it's, uh, I don't know. I, it's funny because I think that Diana, Demi Moore's character, did it for Woody's character. And I think he allowed it mm -hmm. so he could get, I think they both did it for each other. And which is why they ended up together which uh, was not the original ending, which is why they ended up together. Um, or, And I'm going to say a few things during our, our talk. These are things that I heard on set when I was there. 
Okay. I have no proof of any of it, but this is back in 92 when things were rumored. Um, I know that I've read online that a couple of the men in the that were involved in, I guess, the executive producers, uh, they wanted to change the ending when Robert Redford came on. Of course, we all know that all, all actors have a certain archetype that they play and it mm -hmm. doesn't their brand doesn't do well when they break mm -hmm. that. So yep. I've heard multiple things. I've heard that when Robert Redford came on that the executive team changed it so that he let her go. I've heard that he and his team insisted on letting her go. And there, there's been a couple different rumors, but I think the original thing was that she left and they softened it by letting him initiate. It was time for her to go. But it's also such a beautiful ending where he sees the love between them. Oh, it makes me cry still. <laughs> well, I know you got to work with Woody Harrelson and Demi Moore. Um, did you get to meet Robert Redford at all? I did. Yeah. And total happenstance. I don't remember why, but a couple, so we filmed twice, two different days, and I had to go to the Paramount lot and they were still there and they had the boat and he happened to be there that day but the boat was inside basically like a you know a studio hangar and i got to to meet him just briefly so nice you know when you're that when you're that age i don't know if you really take in like who you're meeting as much as perhaps i would now <laughs> And, and ask the right questions. But then I was just so young and nervous. It was sort of like, hi, nice to meet you. You're fabulous and then move on. But um, for me, that entire experience, soup to nuts was absolutely amazing. And what's interesting is, so running into Adrian Lyne was sort of the culmination, the full circle but I've run into Woody Harrelson and Demi Moore at Sundance at supper times. And Woody Harrelson was like, oh my gosh, it's you. And took me from event party to gifting suites. <laughs> I came home with so much, so much stuff all because of Woody saying, oh, this is Pamela from Indecent Proposal. And it was, you know, that what an exciting thing to do. Did you sing to him in the car again? Oh, no. I think we sat on the couch. We were trying on some some boots, and I think I, I jokingly say it. That's a whole nother story. And, and we'll get into that, I'm sure. But yes. <laughs> what? He didn't want seconds on that? <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know, if memory serves me right, isn't he in a band or something? Does he play? I don't remember. I do know that he, uh, I know he's been fighting zombies and stuff like that. <laughs> he was a natural born killer. And then, uh, and then he got beat up in the parking lot by Vanessa Angel and Kingpin, you know, and <laughs> <laughs> what was Demi more like? She was, um, she kind of set the tone for me, actually. We were talking, I think it's really because of her that I ended up singing at the top of the movie. Um, she, she gave me so much advice. She was so on top of it. She was constantly talking to the director saying to Adrian and saying, you know, okay, what's this shot? What is this scene? What are your goals? She was amazing. And then Woody had left the car for a little bit and the two of us were talking and she just she really gave me some solid industry advice and what I loved is one of the days I was there she was just walking around she had made lemonade and she was passing it out to crew members and mm -hmm. again this is another thing the day I was there she had a masseuse on, on staff um that was going around to all the crew members you know they're constantly carrying heavy cables and doing a lot of things and uh that can really wear and tear the body and she had a masseuse on staff to kind of go around to all the different people who needed work and even, you know, go back to some sort of room or trailer where they could work a little bit more deeply on people. I was like, okay, noted. I am going to, I am, I want 
I want to be like her when I grow up, even though she's not that much older than I am. But yeah, she definitely set the precedent for me. Oh, there you go. There you go. Were you at the premiere for Indecent Proposal? I wasn't. I can't believe that. You know, I, I, I don't think I even knew about stuff like that. And my agent didn't. I just I basically got an agent from doing the movie and they it never came up. I don't know why. <laughs> Well, it's funny. You're listed as uncredited for Clueless, you know, and I don't know. Um, it's been a while since I've seen Clueless. I love Amy Heckerling. I mean, she made one of my favorite movies, Fast Times at Ridgemont High, you know. So uh, what was it like uh, working under the direction of Amy Heckerling for that film? Um, that was a really great set, and I spent a, a fair amount of time on it. It was so well run, so relaxed. Um Everything just kind of ran on time until it didn't. And it had nothing to do with Amy. What happened? And and again, this is all my recollection. So mm -hmm. I was actually on the crew on that movie. And I was, um, shares basically her photo double. So whether if it was from the back, my hair, they would spray paint my hair, things like that. And I think I was her, I was her stand in at times, but mostly her photo double. And um, Brecken Meyer, they were teaching him one day, one morning, how to write a, do you know this story? <laughs> they were teaching him how to ride a skateboard and he broke his leg. And we were in the classroom scene and we had all these young kids that were there to be part of the classroom scene. And when he broke his leg that delayed filming by a lot and so to my recollection they released the kids that you know clearly couldn't stay any longer because of uh sad rules and all of a sudden they they look around the crew and they're like you <laughs> you look young enough get to wardrobe and we're gonna make you look as young as you can and so once i got established in the classroom scene along with a couple extras and then I think there was even a, a another crew guy that got roped into it. And mm -hmm. um, so once I got established, I then had to do triple duty and do standing work, plus be in the scenes, <laughs> plus do photo double work. But it, it was funny. And um, God, the cast was, was amazing. You know, that whole thing with the gum. I mean, I watched it. I, I didn't read the script, but I think that was all Alicia um, or Alicia and the whole this thing, the whatever, that kind of thing. Again, that was uh, Elise Donovan. That was so, such great, such great comedy. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now you have uh, a new uh, series out. I wanted to ask before we dive into that. Uh, which do you prefer, um, acting for film or TV? They're really the same. I mean, okay. acting, acting uh, I, whether I'm acting through song, film, television, on stage, you're still tapping into a character, and that's the work, and that's what's fun, I think, to an actor, is developing the character. <laughs> well, you have a new series called Me, Myself, and the World. Uh, are you winning? Am I winning? <laughs> Are you winning against the world? It sounds to me like you're up against a challenge. <laughs> so it's actually a travel show. And if I can uh -huh. viewers, it is airing on Amazon Prime, Amazon Freebie, Go Traveler, who is the distributor and the platform here, and Sling TV and a couple others. Um, it is a travel show. It's gonna it's 12 episodes. Uh the first season one, the first six episodes have released. And I go to Bali and to Southern Vietnam. And in season two, I go to Northern Vietnam and Thailand. And I'm the travel host, which I've been a travel host before. I was a travel host for Florence Henderson. And I personally oh, nice. have been to 81 countries. Um, I think it's closer to 90 because I recounted the other day. But for now, it's officially 81 countries. <laughs> You know what? My story is I've lived here in Fredericton, New Brunswick my whole life. I'm going to be 51 next month. And um, Happy early I net, huh? Happy early birthday. 
<laughs> yeah. It, well, it's interesting because I would get like New Brunswick is that little spot. Nobody knows what it is. We're an hour ahead of New York time, you know, so nobody knows where we are. But I've lived here my whole life. And our two closest cities are St. John and Moncton. And I would get homesick just going there to visit or go to a concert. I get homesick, and their cities are maybe an hour, a couple hours away. Well, here's my travel experience: is uh, I had an actress, Lisa Langwa, Canadian actress, on here for the second time, and um, the first time she was in Los Angeles. Second time she had moved back to Canada, and uh, we got talking about travel. And she asked what was stopping me. And then she, uh, I told her this and that, you know, I'd never flown before, never this. And she made me an offer I couldn't refuse. She told, um, offered me the chance to go assist her at a horror film convention in Toronto. And I could not say no. I was scared to death. But here's the story. First time on a plane, and it, to me it felt like a bus in the sky. I actually dug it. Great. When we land, yeah, when we landed, it was the first time I'd seen escalators since the eighties because we don't have them here anymore. You don't have it, escalators in New Brunswick? Well, not here in Fredericton. I don't know about Moncton and St. John, but we used to have them in the mid eighties. Yes, um, they disappeared along with our drive-ins, but <laughs> but I remember um, meeting Lisa, and uh, she taught me all the ins and outs of the subways because we don't have those here either except the mm -hmm. sandwich stores where you eat at but <laughs> but she taught me all of that and i remember i was having dinner with her and she was asking me all kinds of questions about new brunswick and all kept going through my head was why are i homesick hmm. why are i homesick I stayed the week, and I didn't want to come home. You got a little bit of the travel bug. Yep. And I've gone to um, Toronto every year since. I always see Lisa when I go down there. In fact, I've done two cons with her, and I plan to do another one with her this fall. And um, I had a blast. I love Toronto. And I haven't been to anywhere else, but... Um, I got a passport finally, but <laughs> whether I'll use it, I don't know, but I have it. But I was surprised I never got homesick. Well, you know, home is wonderful, but one of the greatest things about home is coming home to it. But getting to travel and experience new cultures, new people, new food, new experiences, mm -hmm. it just broadens your life so much and then you can come home and share it with everyone and your listeners so are you going to do but part of your travel show is it go are you go do one here and say wait a minute what's this place this must be parts unknown <laughs> oh it's well, called new brunswick oh gee nobody knows what this place is i've made a new discovery columbus didn't know this one <laughs> i've actually been to st john's not St. John, New Brunswick. Yeah. Yeah? Well, I've been to both St. John's. I've been to St. John's down in the Caribbean, and I've been to St. John's in New Brunswick. The little, little small, is it an island? No, it's a city uh, handy right next door to us. Okay. Yeah. We, we crossed from Harridge by ship over to St. John's, uh -huh. and nearly drowned nearly you might have went to st john you might have went to st john's newfoundland maybe oh newfoundland yes yeah it's newfoundland there you go <laughs> yeah okay another st john's to get to there you go there you go <laughs> yeah nobody knows where new brunswick is we're just lost here I'm we're lost. I, I often said when they announced in wrestling, when they announced that the Ultimate Warrior was from Parts Unknown, I was like, oh, "What is he from New Brunswick?" <laughs> <laughs> <That's> 
but uh, nonetheless, talk up, talk. Uh, what's coming up more for your show? Because you mentioned, you know, the places you've been, and uh, what what's up for the next season? Oh gosh, well, season two will release uh, in probably quarter four, um, maybe October, November. Mm -hmm. And then I am starting to put the season three and four together. And, you know, what most producers and hosts have to do, look for branding partners and uh, production partners and start building out the show. And I am thinking of actually going to Eastern Europe. What about New Brunswick? (laughs) St. John's, New Brunswick. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> new brunswick um, this new place nobody knows about <laughs> um yeah i'm thinking of going to um eastern europe and europe mm-hmm. kind of exploring some of the lesser known places in europe that are so incredible and they're affordable and reachable and i think people will relate to it which is you know going from um, Asia and all those experiences there and show them something so different from that. It would be exciting. Absolutely. (laughs) What was it like traveling with uh, Florence Henderson? Did she bring the Brady Bunch along? (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, I had to throw that in. (laughs) Right. Um, She's great. She, uh, we didn't travel at all. I would report on the show about different locations as the travel expert. And um, she, you know, she came from musical theater. So when she found out my background and she heard that I was musical theater, we just would talk up a storm when we'd be sitting there getting, well, she'd get her makeup and hair done and I'd get touched up. (laughs) And she was so kind. I really believe that I did that many episodes because of her because she kept having me back and she was so generous and so nice. Uh, we didn't get to talk too much about the the Brady Bunch, but of course I'm a seventies kid and that Brady Bunch was the thing. Oh yeah. Me. I grew up with it as well. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's, like, it's not only iconic, it's, you know, it affects your life because you want to be like one of the girls or one of the guys. <laughs> Or yeah. guys just wanted to be with uh, Mary McCormick. Yes. Or excuse me. Um, not Jan. I, not, Jan. Marcia. Marcia. I think I screwed up. <laughs> I think I screwed up the name. <laughs> yeah, Marcia. Yeah. Everybody, Marcia, Marcia, Marcia. <laughs> yep. All these great, great characters. Oh, it just kills me because I don't think they ever made residuals off all, all of that. That was just before that one, a uh, family affair. I think they were all just before residuals kicked in. So, oh, those actors deserve a lot. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. <laughs> do you have any uh, charities that you're involved in that you want to plug on here? And certainly uh, you want to plug your website. Oh, yeah. Um. Yes. My website is PamelaHolt.com. Mm-hmm. And. Please find me. I, I'm really active on Instagram, um, getting active on TikTok, and both of them are the Pamela Holt. Um, and I don't have any charities that I'm involved in. I try to do charity along the way. So one of the things that I talk about uh, in some interviews is ways that you can be kind when you travel. For example, um, and I know this is not a, a travel show that we're talking about, but one is bring extra clothes. So on your last day, if you're staying in a hotel or you've met some local people that might be in need, leave some clothes behind or leave an extra tip for the gal who's cleaning your room because then that money goes directly to her or her family or bring some you know, school supplies that you can leave behind or give to people along the way. Also, my personal favorite is when I'm getting off the plane, I collect all the little extra, you know, that sometimes they have kits on the international flights and the kits have a toothbrush and socks and all those kinds of things. I collect all the kits that are semi-used and then I give them out along my travels. So I think. There you go. There yeah. you go. 
That's kind of well, fun. you know what? It was wonderful having you come on here today. I know you were really, really busy, but I'm so glad we were able to make this happen and uh, that you reached out. And yeah, thir 30 years for a decent proposal. Where has the time gone? I don't know. I don't know. And Corey, yep. thank you so much for reaching out to me and and being interested. It's fun to share these stories and um, you know, just when I was preparing, you know, for today, I had so much fun thinking back of all the stories and all the different things. So that was really neat. Thank you. Yeah. Before I let you go, would you mind doing a plug for my show? Absolutely. Just state your name and say you're listening to Greg Gilbert on Python's Paradise. Okay. Hi, I'm Pamela Holt, and I'm listening to Greg Gilbert on Python's Paradise. Yes, folks, and uh, <laughs> no indecent proposals, folks. No, not no. unless it involves uh, talking your cat into not uh, using the washroom on the floor. <laughs> I have to give him. I have to give him a decent proposal. Give him treats. He's over there asleep now. He's my, took all of his energy just coming on here, and I exploited him. Oh boy! Exploited him <laughs> for hits. <laughs> <laughs> Pamela, thank you so much for coming on here today. It was wonderful to meet you. And uh, yes, and um, keep me up to date on the show because, you know, I'd love to have you back maybe next year. Thank you. I appreciate Abs it. Uh, I'll let absolutely. you know when it drops. And of course, you have my email. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. God bless you. You have yourself a relaxing day. I know it's busy. Try to relax. Thank you. Thank you so much, Greg. And thank you to all your listeners as well. Thanks. Absolutely. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>